pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry. We have the minutes of two previous me uh, meetings, um, the May 2012 meeting and the June 2012 meeting to approve. Uh, let's do the, uh, the May meeting first. Um, they were in your packets that were emailed to all of us. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May uh, Board of Health meeting. Any? Ms. Wishner is moving to approve them, and second, Dr. Humphrey. Um, any comments, deletions, additions? Um, hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any contraries? The minutes of the meeting of uh, May are approved. Uh, we'll move now to the uh, June 2012 meeting. Um, is there a motion to approve those minutes? Don't be shy. Dr. Saldivar has moved to approve those minutes. Any second? I'll second it. Dr. Donato is <laughs> seconded. And uh, are there any additions or deletions, corrections, so forth? Um, hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any contraries? Those minutes are also approved unanimously. Um, the announcements section. Um, before I ask Mr. Taltone to make his announcements, I have a few. Um, on Wednesday this week, September 19th, uh, Delaware County is sponsoring their second annual Women's Wellness Fair. Um, it's at the Delaware County Government Center from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, and that is at 201 Front Street in Media, Pennsylvania. They will have free screenings, educational materials, and the latest information about preventive health for women. Um, and I would encourage everyone who can to, uh, to try to uh, get down to uh, Media again. The fair will be from 10 to 1 on September 19th at the Delaware County Government Center, 201 Front Street in Media. On September 29th, 2012, in uh, Radnor Township at um, the Radnor Township Municipal Building um, and the Wayne Senior Center at 108 Station Road in Wayne, Pennsylvania, two locations in our township, we will have another National Take Back Day um, which is an opportunity for citizens to surrender expired, unwanted, or unused pharmaceutical controlled substances and other medications for destruction. Um, information about this is available on the township website as well as on the uh, cable TV scroll. Um, so it's very important to, um, to get to dispose properly of these uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, substances. Um, as you will see, if you look at the scroll, each day approximately 2,500 teens use prescription drugs to get high for the first time. And uh, so that is, that is a big public health issue. Uh, again, it's September 29th between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, here at the Radnor Township Municipal Building and also at the Wayne Senior Center, 108 Station Road in Wayne. The, uh, at the Delaware County State Health Center, 115 West 5th Street, Chester, Pennsylvania, is an ongoing program uh, whereby um, citizens can get free shingles vaccine um, for uninsured or underinsured adults who are 60 years of age or older. 
um, sh shingles uh, vaccine uh, is available again at the Delaware County State Health Center on an ongoing basis at 151 West 5th Street. And please uh, remember that you need to call for an appointment and the number to call is 610-447-3250. If you're 60 years of age or older, this could be an important thing for you to do. At this point, I'll ask uh, Mr. Taltone to provide additional announcements and reports. Thank you, Mr. Hazen. Good afternoon, board. Um, tonight at 6.30, the Board of Commissioners will be holding a special meeting on the uh, review of the 2013 budget calendar and the preparation process. That will be in this room at 6.30 p.m. this evening. Um, also, I'd like to, uh, to make the board aware of and the public that as on Saturday, the 16th, there was a lady who was bitten by a skunk. That skunk proved to be positive for rabies. It was in the area of Luella Court area of the township. Um, as we speak, police are out with flyers notifying the people in that area that there may possibly be other animals that may be possibly with rabies, so to be aware. Um, so we put those flyers out this afternoon through the police department. The other thing that I wanted to mention to the, to the Board of Commission, I mean Board of Health uh, members and the public is, if you notice on the township website, you'll have some other fields under the Community Development Department and then the health um, bullet, you'll have the food inspections that we talked about. Starting July 1 of, of uh, this year, we began putting on the website food safety inspections, the results of food safety inspections. We thought it was important that we do that. We move forward with the state's mandate. We are the first local municipality in the state of Pennsylvania to, to, to move forward with that. In fact, the Department of Agriculture has came down and looked at our process and want to use it as a model. Um, we are, the only difference between you look, when you look at our inspection form and our inspection results is that our heading is in the same place that theirs is. Um, instead of Department of Agriculture, you'll see Radnor Township's logo. Um, so we've, we've already started that process. Um, likewise, we're going to start putting Consumer Product Safety Commi Commission recalls and CDC alerts that are appropriate and uh, health alerts, advisories, and updates um, on our website so the residents can look in and get good information that will help them help us in our quality of life. During the month of June, July, and August, we did 60 food inspections, 44 bathing places, 22 quality of life issues, we, um, ranging from fox and dog bites to humans, the food inspection complaints, rat and mice complaints, property maintenance issues, high grass, um, pool maintenance with the mosquitoes. We had a, a numerous amount of those issues. Um, as far as new food facilities coming into the township, you may notice that Chili's has decided to rebuild and they're now open. We have Pome Radner, which is a banquet facility at um, 175 King of Prussia. Renee's Market, some new facilities in the farmer's market. Where Johnny's Doghouse used to be, there's Crepere, Bechamel. We have Giant, who's replaced uh, Gennardi's. Uh, have another uh, eatery on the campus of Villanova. And another pizza place in Conestoga. 900 block. In your packet items, you'll see the agenda, the Board of Health report for both uh, May and June, the minutes, various information regarding West Nile virus. As you know, we had the spray in, in Radnor Township, and there was a lot of people who wanted the spray and many people who did not want the spray. Um, I just wanted to remind people that that is a Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection operation. It is not a mosquito in general program. If it was just mosquitoes in general, they wouldn't spray at all. It's a program that con tries to control the West Nile virus and the mosquitoes that carry it. So that's what that program is all, all about. 
Mr. Hazen did t um, talk about the National Take Back Day, which I think is important um, to get the um, prescription drugs and off the street and make sure that they don't get on the street and a, a viable way of getting rid of them and disposing of them safely. Um, I was able to, and along with Mr. Mr. Hazen, was able to attend the Delaware County Advisory Board. Um, I apologize, I didn't have time to write a full report regarding that, but I think Mr. Hazen hit the highlights. We had some special events, which was the Mainline Jazz and Food Festival, which was June 20th, June 2nd, I'm sorry. Um, Philadelphia Freedoms Tennis at Villanova, which was over a series of uh, four or five days. And just Sunday, yesterday, we had the Wayne Fall Festival, which was very nice. Uh, several health alerts, advisories, and updates. And so ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Taltone. Uh, let me ask you to go back, um, going back to the, um, the issue with the uh, rabbit skunk. Um, yes. the, the flyers that the police are posting and distributing uh, ha have the number, the telephone number in Chester that citizens can call if they think they've come into contact? It does. If you like, I can read it. Thank you. you like me to read 610. Yeah, the, the four number is 647 3254. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, so, do we know anything about the effectiveness of this spraying? Um, like, do they measure mosquito populations or how do they know if it works? I'm not sure of the answer to that. I do know that how they determine that they're going to spray is that they put traps out. And it's based on the number of traps that they find with mosquitoes that are positive. And typically, it's, it's the one that they call the Culex piping. It's a species. I'm not that familiar with it. But that's the one that's most aggressive. And there's one other one that they say it's the inside mosquito that comes inside the house. I was just going to comment uh, before Larry had said that, that they do use the traps for the mosquitoes to determine the viral load that's in any given area. So. Well, um, I will try to get an answer to that question, um, whether it's, uh, I don't even know whether it's possible that August 29th was the date of the spraying, whether any additional attempts have been made to uh, spraying in Radnor Township. Uh, but on Wednesday this week, um, uh, I'm doing a, a video recording here of uh, Radnor Health Matters program on West Nile virus. And I will ask um, Dr. Avedian um, that question because he has more information than almost anybody about what's being done um, in Delaware County on that issue. So uh, that will be one of the questions I'll, I'll raise with him. Any other questions about uh, the reports and announcements? Okay, I want to move to um, old business. Uh, and again, um, Mr. Taltone um, mentioned that the uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, our Township Board of Commissioners, are meeting here. Uh, we need to vacate this room by about 6 o'clock um, so, uh, be because of their meeting. Um, the first item under old business is um, teen health issues. And um, before I ask Dr. Leader and Ms. Lee, Ms. Lee, by the way, our Board of Health intern from last uh, school year is here with us today. Thank you for coming and helping to fill in. Um, I can assure you it's not a life sentence. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we're trying to get a successor for you. Um, but uh, at the same time, um, we, we need to get some closure to the project that Ms. Lee was working on. And uh, <clears throat> one of those, uh, that 
I heard from Kevin Kane um, this afternoon. He had to leave work because of being ill. Um, and he informed me that uh, they are working on reproducing the posters. They had a problem with, their, uh, with the school district's uh, copy machine, which makes posters from smaller size things over the summer. And it just took some time to get it repaired or replaced. Frankly, I don't know which they decided to do. Um, but he thinks they're back in business uh, at this point. So hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, to move that that project along, um, I don't recall now if um, this happened before or after our June meeting. But uh, Ms. Lee and I did meet with um, Superintendent Grobman and uh, Mr. Kane uh, to uh, to get the uh, school districts okay to go ahead with this and. That's why it, it comes to be that they are actually reproducing the posters for us. Um, <clears throat> that, uh, that leads me to um, the related issue of um, this year's Board of Health, our Adner High School intern, and I know uh, both Dr. Leader and I have been extensively in touch with uh, people at the high school. I've met with... Uh, uh, the principal and exchanged emails, um, and I know that you've done some follow-up uh, recently. So, can you fill us in? Yeah, I can. And thank you for Alexa for coming back this evening. I really appreciate that. Um, so, I reached out to the um, the school nurse actually when the school year started again because I think she's she was a good point person to be on the ground with a lot of students and told her that we were interested in a, particularly me being a sophomore student and. Uh, if, and I told her about the success of our previous interns and what we were hoping to do. And we've heard back from, I've heard back from two of the science teachers that have students that are interested. And just today, I heard back from one of the students who couldn't make it today's meeting because of the school holiday and she had alternate plans. But um, I'm going to follow up with her later this week. Um, and hopefully, if she's interested, she's, she's interested in some type of a medical career. That's kind of as far as she had gotten. But um, we may be able to start with her in October. Which is, which is actually, as I think back, I think, Alexi, you started in October, and I believe Ms. Mosier Mills did as well. So it seems like it takes September for us to really yeah. get it going, and then we start in October. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic, but I'll keep working on it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, any questions about that? Comments? Okay. Um, the... I'm going to skip around a little bit on the agenda because I want to make sure we... The Environmental Advisory Council, we've had um, uh, Ms. Doyle, um, who is not here this evening, representing the board. Um, so I, I haven't had, I thought I would ask her this evening if she was willing to continue to do that for this um, this year, uh, the 2012-2013 year. Um, but uh, I'll have to do that via email unless there is someone here tonight who uh, would like to do that. Oh, okay. Um, I'm assuming that Ms. Doyle uh, will be interested in doing that, but I will confirm that. Um, there's no report uh, for the Alliance for Safe Kids. I haven't received any information um, with regard to um, <clears throat> with regard to the uh, first meeting of, of this academic year. Um, again, that group is composed of um, members of the school district, uh, the community. Uh, this board is represented on it. Um, and uh, uh, they have developed uh, over the last year series of programs that have to do with uh, keeping kids safe. Um, the first one last year was on um, internet safety and cyberbullying, and the second one was um, with regard to making a safe uh, transition from high school to college. And that was a very interesting program. Um, I imagine that it is still on the township's website uh, for viewing if anyone missed it. Uh, we did um, 
give out um, through Mr. Doling's good offices. We made copies of uh, DVDs and gave them out to the 24 recipients of uh, Radnor High School Scholarship Fund scholarships uh, in June. Um, so that was a, a good use of that. Uh, Dr. Donato, is there anything new on the issue of deer management that you can tell us? I know that, um, for example, last year the township decided that it would employ um, sharpshooters to help cull the deer population. Is that imminent um, at this point? I've, I've not heard anything of the deer management issue from from anyone at this point, so uh, you know, I'm not sure what to comment on. I don't know if. Uh... Um, yes, I reviewed. I went through um, as far as the township uh, web page, and also looked um, into some of the local papers and did a search on it. Um, the only thing there, there really isn't anything as far as an update. Uh, there was, I mean, it's. According to what was on the web page, is that the budget and funding is still to be determined. Um, yet I thought I was hoping um, that Mr. Fisher would have been here today, as far as the commissioners, because I thought that it was a sort of a that they had voted to um, to do a, um, the program, but I don't know. It's still in the web page. It's still unclear. Um, they did talk about that they were, the commissioners did um, talk about that private, private hunters in one of their June meetings, I think this might have been after, it was uh, June 20th, that private hunters must be allowed to um, hunt on public land. Uh, the one thing that I did find of interest, just and will be brief because of time, but I, there was a, um, I found a, some information about that Valley Forge National Park has been doing this for um, four years. They're into their second year. Um, the deer have been quite an issue um, as far as with the whole lands escaping of, of, the, of the park. Uh, they're going to be doing it for two more years. And... Uh, it was just something that Dr. Donato had talked about that if you don't keep it up, that you might have that rebuild. Is that I mean? Yeah, it's a rebound in population rebound. if you just do it for a short amount of time, like one year. So um, I'm, you know, I, it sounds as if they've made a dent in the issue at uh, Valley Forge. Oh, it sounds, uh, yeah. yes, it seems like they, they did a, a very, um, they have, um, did uh, <laughs> make it sense, but I was just and then, but then they said that they were going to that um, after their um, the second so they have two more seasons and then they might resort to birth control, which um, has never been um, felt to be an effective way of of um, of working. But I just thought that that would be something for us to follow as far as if there is a rebound effect um, at Valley Forge after just doing it for four years. Plus, it doesn't sound, the one thing that um, Mr. Fisher said was that they weren't sure how long um, we were going to be doing the, um, the calling, if, you know, once we started. It's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I was at a conference this summer and they were talking about there's a certain issue in uh, ferrets and um, they get a particular they have the adrenal gland which gets out of hand and they get a lot of tumors in it and there's a vaccine for that that as I was talking to the manufacturer how that could be actually translated into um, other types of control for animals because it, it does um, go to the core uh, base of the sexual hormones being produced and um, it was pretty intriguing uh, and believe it or not the uh, u.s uh, department of uh, i think it's a uh, wild uh, wildlife or game commission they're involved as well so it really is uh, would be interesting to see if something like that came about but nothing right on the on the front line for the deer for sure yet but it would be interesting to have a little update on, on what our township's doing because we had a very mild winter 
and I'm sure the herds have multiplied. Along those lines, Dr. Donato, I, um, there's an article in the uh, front page of the local section of the Philadelphia Inquirer today about the cat population, and one of the things they mentioned is that they have, there's, I, they didn't say who has offered this, but there's a $25 million uh, award available for an invention of an injectable sterilization for cats. So who knows uh, if that will translate. Any other comments on the, the deer management issue or the feral? I, I assume you were referring to feral cats in, in the article. Uh, okay. Any other old business that didn't get covered? We'll move on to new business. Um, I've talked uh, already about um, what uh, we're doing on Wednesday in, in terms of uh, recording a program on uh, West Nile virus and um, that certainly is uh, is one of the issues um, for 2012-2013 and um, I'd like to throw the floor open for just brainstorming uh, with regard to any other um, issues that the members of this board think we should be addressing over the next uh, nine or ten months. I, I have one, I'm, and I'm just, it's more of an intriguing thought that I'm not sure what to do with, but uh, I'm, I'm really intrigued, Mr. Taltone, with the new restaurant cleanliness rating standards that the township has adopted, and you were saying that we've become a model for the state in terms of these ratings, and I don't I don't know, I don't know, I'm thinking about the purpose of them. And of course, maybe they're to educate the public about the cleanliness of their establishments, or maybe they're meant to educate the restaurant owners about maintaining standards, or maybe, or maybe there's something there to do within public and the education about the standards of quality, or restaurants, or, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, <laughs> but I'm intrigued that we've become this model of the state, and I think we have something really good going, and I don't know if there's more we can do with it. But I think about when I'm in New York City, and I'm in Manhattan, and there's, they're posted on the walls, and you can walk in and, and restaurants, and I know we haven't gone that far, and I'm not suggesting we do that, but I'm wondering um, if there's something we should be doing around this issue. The one thing we don't do, we don't do the rating. We do a food safety inspection report, and the idea behind it is, well, for one, the first thing is that the law requires it. And once they told us that we needed to do it, they told us about three years ago, we be put it in motion. The IT department and I, we started working on it. And um, I think it's important that the people who send their kids to our community to go to college, to people who visit, we're one of the major suburbs outside of Philadelphia, a um, uh, major city. I think it's important that people know what, where the best place to, eat, place to eat is. I brag all the time when I go to our CASA meetings, which is the Central Atlantic States of Food and Drug Officials, that I can put any food eatery in Radnor Township up against anybody of the same size or the same type, a and you can. Um, so I thought it was important that we move forward with that. And I think people have a right to know, you know, whether or not they're keeping their food establishment clean and the food is good. So that's why I do it. But an interesting aspect of this is, um, is the public's information. Uh, granted that we have posted a report, um, but does the public have a way of knowing from that report um, what it is that has been looked at and what what the implications of the findings are? Um, that yeah, sort of the, thing. the categories are pretty clear. Um, they, they really are. They're, they're really clear about what the issue is. What 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 each category what occurs is it tells you the section of the code, and then right under that. I put my personal comments as to what I saw, 
what I observed, what the issue is. I, I was going to make a recommendation that um, if anyone on the board has the time to go with Larry on these inspections, it really is a very, uh, you get a really great education on what uh, is routinely looked for and where the deficiencies are. And uh, like I say, I, I had gone uh, one time for a day and it was uh, very eye-opening uh, as to what uh, Larry does as well as, you know, what the expectations are of, uh, you know, each uh, eatery. So. Yeah, I'll second that. I also went with uh, Mr. Talton for a day and um, it was indeed very enlightening uh, to do that. And, uh, I would just say, in addition to all of that, the, the respect with which uh, Larry Taltone is viewed by um, even the people that he is inspecting is, uh, is uh, very gratifying, uh, and his expertise is, uh, is looked up to by them. Thank you. Any other issues? Well, uh, along those lines, I mean, it seems like um, it would be good to make the public more aware that this exists. So I don't know if there's a, you know, a media contact or a, you know, some way that we could try and get some publicity. Yeah, a news article or something, you know, even on the radio or um, to try and make people aware this exists and, you know, to Larry's horn a little bit along the way. I mean, you know. Sam Strike of the Radnor Patch did do an article on it. I know, okay. do know that she highlighted it and put it in her paper. Any, any other um, health issues that we should be looking at this in the next uh, nine or ten months? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to put out there maybe um, with all the success last year uh, on the obesity campaign and uh, the sugary drinks campaign for the high school students, that perhaps we should look at younger students, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Uh, you know, I think that they're at equal, if not higher, risk of developing obesity. And I think there's some studies out of California and other places that show that um, when kids have obesity younger, uh, at younger ages, they tend to not. Um, be as responsive to uh, some interventions when they get older, so perhaps doing something in a younger age group. Um, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that uh, very much. In fact, uh, when um, Alexa Lee and I met with the superintendent, Dr. Groban, and Mr. Kane, we agreed at that time that the posters would not simply be made available in the high school, um, but in the middle school as well. and. Uh, the content may not have been um, as suitable for elementary schools, but certainly we can look at what kind of content we can develop for elementary schools. Um, in addition to the school buildings and this building, uh, we also talked about making, uh, having the posters up in the library, um, at the Radnor Memorial Library, where a lot of kids go. So. There. There was the one woman, and I'm sorry, I'm not recalling her name, uh, when we were talking about the poster and the education piece, um, because I actually asked that question as far as, because the focus was on the high school, but she said that there were things that they were doing um, in the younger grades. Um, in the middle school and in the um, elementary schools. I mean, I think it's worth following up um, because, but I think they had some age appropriate um, examples or, you know, it was more interactive and, and age appropriate for, um, to be teaching the younger kids about the obesity issue. Um, so along those lines, I think it would be, you know, there have been promising reports out of a study in Rhode Island that just came out today about the success of an obesity intervention um, with children that was much kind of less labor intensive than some other 
things that had been tried and uh, also was was scalable in the sense of the more in-person visits with a pediatrician, the better the kids did. Um, and yet it was not, it was a very sort of doable type of intervention. And as well, there was a report out from Philadelphia co-authored by Health Commissioner Don Schwartz just last week showing that actually, you know, they have really good, some good promising results about a decrease in school BMI um, uh, obesity rates in Philadelphia. And they have been, you know, doing a tremendous amount of work there with the Get Healthy Philly um, campaign with, uh, you know, things in schools as well as corner stores and really a citywide initiative so that, you know, although, you know, they caution in that report that, of course, they still have high rates of obesity, seeing progress for the first time, because that's been one of the things about this health issue is that for a long time we have not seen progress on it. So seeing some promising results is really uh, good. And it would be, it'll be uh, important for us to see as the school BMI rates come out for this year, what are we seeing in Radnor? Um, compared to previous years, because it does seem like there is a, a change in public awareness um, on this issue. And one of the things about sort of working with younger children uh, with the Pennsylvania chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, where I work, part of what I work on is this pediatric and obesity prevention effort where we offer programs to pediatric and family medicine offices available to any practice that wants one and also for professional meetings about um, pediatric obesity prevention, evaluation, and treatment. And one of the changes I've seen in the year uh, plus um, that I've been working on this is the um, intervention with younger and younger children, even down to infants. So pe pediatricians feeling more comfortable and more confident when they see infant weight for length, which, which is the infant equivalent of body mass index, which is weight for height. So with infants, it's weight for length. Um, intervening younger with uh, babies and families when they see wait for length um, results that are, you know, really off the charts. So I think um, there is a greater understanding of the issue in general and um, with that idea of working with younger and younger children. And there are school lunch, federal school lunch guidelines which have taken place, which are partly in effect this year and will be even more next year, but there are definitely changes in the school lunches as of this year in terms of more fruits and vegetables and um, what, you know, even in terms of the foods that are served and not served, as well as, you know, I think we've seen changes in the vending machines and, um, you know, just what's available. I feel like we still have a ways to go with the kind of fundraising uh, you know, the snacks, um, but, uh, and some schools do have policies about that, about saying that you can't fundraise for, you know, unhealthy foods, but um, anyway, I, I think there, it, it, as I say, the school BMI data will be interesting to see um, as they come out. Well, I, I'm very intrigued with looking at this issue f uh, with regard to younger, younger children, um, perhaps elementary school age and down. Um, and I don't know if what, what I think would be a good way to follow up on this is to perhaps form a subcommittee of this board um, of people who are interested in this and following up to develop some ideas and, um, and ways to move this forward as a, as a, uh, as a public education uh, program that this board could foster in our township. Um, I don't know if anybody's ready to commit to being part of the subcommittee tonight, but certainly Ms. Wishner, Dr. Saldivar. Okay, that's a good start. Anybody else who feels motivated to uh, get part of that, uh, please. But. We'll look forward to at least uh, some sort of preliminary report um, next month. Thank you. Um, is there any? Uh, so on a new topic, 
um, immunization. There are a couple of things in particular about immunization. One, I'm just reminding everybody to get their annual influenza vaccine recommended for everybody six months of age and older. And again, just to remind the public that you're protecting yourself, your family, and your community, and that you can be infectious, you can be spreading influenza before you're symptomatic. So you can't say, oh, I'll wait till I'm coughing and sneezing, and then I'll just cover my cough. Or, um, you know, of course, you should always cover your cough, but that's not sufficient because even several days and with younger children up to a week, um, you know, plus or minus a few days on that end as well, you can be spreading influenza, and it certainly can be serious and is a killer every year. Um, we don't know yet what will be the predominant, you know, what we end up with in terms of circulating strains this year. They always make the best guess they can in, what, in terms of what's circulating elsewhere in the world um, and the general uh, progress of the influenza viruses. So, um, you know, the vaccines are out there. They're at your practice offices. They're at the public health center. Um, and, um, you know, so any place to take advantage of getting your flu vaccine, you know, go ahead and do that. The second thing is, is that we are still seeing a continuation in the um, outbreak of pertussis or whooping cough. And uh, there's been a lot of, you know, articles in the press about how we're learning more about how the diphtheria tetanus acellular pertussis or DTAP vaccine is wanes, the protection wanes uh, after several years. And so children who are even fully immunized can come down with pertussis. And this uh, disease, uh, adults and older adolescents can get it and not feel that ill from it. So may not realize they in fact have pertussis and so can be walking around spreading it to, in, with pertussis in particular, it's babies who we really worry about with a small airway that becomes inflamed and creates that characteristic whoop and also unfortunately is a, is a killer disease. Um, even if you've had pertussis disease in the past, that does not make you immune. You still need, as an adult, to get your Tdap or tetanus diphtheria acellular pertussis TDAP vaccine, which would, at the moment, is still a one-time dose. So, in other words, replacing what would be a your usual what we think of as tetanus vaccine, the every 10 years shot, which is really TD tetanus and diphtheria. Although, don't wait 10 years to get your Tdap. Everybody is recommended to get one as soon as possible. And we're seeing approximately triple the number of cases in pertussis this year as opposed to last year um, statewide. And um, really nationally, it's, it's a problem. So we may be seeing some, um, the, the thing with the um, DTAP, tet, diphtheria, tetanus, acellular pertussis is not effective as a whole cell vaccine that used to be used previously, which was just DTP, no, no little A in for acellular in there because it was whole cell vaccine. Um, so I think there's some discussion about whether we may in fact, should we perhaps go back to the, the whole cell vaccine, but for the moment what's recommended really is that everybody keep their vaccinations up to date and get your Tdap if you're um, uh, adolescent or adult, um, you know, as soon as possible. But, you know, we may be seeing something on, um, you know, this issue um, in the schools or, you know, and I don't know if the schools are going to offer, just to go back to flu for a second, I don't know if the schools will offer the annual flu um, within the schools as they have in previous years. One last issue about immunization, which may be affecting us, is that um, there's a federal flu, um, vaccine program called Vaccines for Children, the VFC program, and this provides free, well, you know, at no cost to the provider or to the patient. Obviously, it's not free in the sense we pay for it with taxpayer dollars, but um, so VFC vaccine is provided for children 18 years of age and younger who have Medicaid insurance or, or who are eligible for Medicaid insurance or who are American Indian or Alaskan natives. So this vaccine is given to providers, the idea being that children don't need to be referred out but can receive this vaccine at their usual source of medical care. And um, 
it, the oversight of this has been fairly loose in the sense of, I know for the Montgomery County Health Department that approximately a third of their VFC vaccine has been in fact used for privately insured patients who were referred to the health center. So private physicians have done this for several reasons. The increasing complexity of the schedule, um, some patients have just found it convenient to go to a public health center. I mean, the same, I would imagine, there's no special reason to think Montgomery County is unique. I would bet the same is true of Delaware County. Um, and um, also some vaccines are expensive, the no, notably Gardasil and Cervarex, the human papillomavirus or HPV vaccines, which are recommended for adolescent males and females. So just to avoid the outlay of cash, um, for some of these vaccines for private patients. Some providers have referred patients to the public health centers and the public health centers have just used this federal vaccine for this purpose. Um, but there is a real crackdown on this now. And so this um, Vaccines for Children program or VFC vaccine is, you know, only as of September 1st is really only being given to patients with Medicaid insurance, Medicaid eligible, American Indian or Alaska Native, no privately insured patients. Um, with the exception of this year's flu vaccine, which is still being given to everybody regardless of your insurance status. Um, and so this is causing an adjustment in some private provider offices. Some don't know about this yet. They're going to be hearing about it when patients who they may have said, oh yes, go to the public health center for your vaccines or go to the public health center for your HPV vaccine, we'll start to hear back from their patients, guess what, I can't get it there. I went and they said they won't give it to me because I do have private insurance and you're supposed to give it to me. So there's going to be sort of a kind of disjointed period and, um, you know, again, just as an issue that we should be aware of. And, you know, immunization is always a kind of uh, you know, it's always an important public health issue. So these are some issues, some parts of it I'm just mentioning, but I'm sure immunization will continue to be something as a board that we should be paying attention to. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Wishner on, on that report? The, um, <clears throat> the issue of pertussis concerns in Delaware County was also addressed at the Delaware County Health Advisory Board meeting on uh, September 13th, and some of the same issues were discussed at that meeting. Um, the uh, I think I think we've. Uh, I want to go back and and just ask if uh, on on Friday this week on the 21st the. Um, uh, College of Physicians of Philadelphia is having a symposium on um, the health issues related to hydraulic fracturing or fracking, as it is popularly called, um, a method of um, getting uh, oil from shale. And uh, this is a major concern in um, in Pennsylvania, and uh, the symposium is uh, is going to run from nine to noon, and I just wanted to make the members of this board aware. And I don't know if anyone else is planning to go. Ms. Wishner, I know is going, but uh, if you can make it, it should be an interesting symposium. And we'll look forward to hearing if there are any local um, issues for for us here in Radnor Township and Delaware County. Um, that uh, we should we should be aware of. Um, any other items uh, before we move on to public participation? So just one last announcement. Um, I was at a really terrific event uh, yesterday. Strollers in the park at the Please Touch Museum at Memorial Hall, um, and. Um, they, and at that, I just became aware of, um, and that was a, like health and fitness, a two-mile course, and um, there were lots of tables there with all kinds of different health information. For me, it was the first time I'd been to the new Please Touch Museum site because my kids are older now, but 
for anyone who hasn't been there, it's just absolutely fantastic. I mean, just great, amazing place. And they are having a monster mash around Halloween, also for young children. It's the Friday before Halloween in the evening. So just for people who have, uh, you know, kids or grandkids, nieces, nephews, et cetera, um, uh, you know, I would just really highly recommend it. And I'm sure you could look at the Please Touch Museum website for information about it. You know, it's a healthy sort of Halloween-y type theme, but the place itself is just, just amazing. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, one more quick announcement. I just wanted to provide an update of Radnor Township's community garden this summer and the successes in the garden. Um, this is Skunk Hollow Community Garden, and I'm not sure if anyone else was participating in the garden this summer, but um, I was involved in one of the plots, and so I just wanted to provide an update, and I talked with one of our, we have two community organizers for the garden, so I checked in with them this week to get some successes and numbers, and so we had, this summer, we had 46 families gardening together in 36 plots, and this is at Skunk Hollow, which is next to the Willows, it's adjacent to the Willows. Um, we grew things like asparagus, corn, beans, squash, we shared all of it. We had an herb garden. Um, the garden was pesticide and herbicide free. Um, we had volunteer groups, mainly students from the Haverford School, the Radnor Lacrosse team, um, a couple groups from Villanova. We have an Eagle Scout doing a shed project right now within the group. Um, two men who live in Radnor who are beekeepers established three hives on the site and we started out with 27, not we, they did, <laughs> 27,000 bees. Um, and we now, they expect we have maybe 10 times that number of bees in the hives. The hives are doing well and will continue to be there. Um, they provided two workshops this summer on beekeeping, and uh, I, I attended one of those, and it was, it was neat. We all suited up, and we got to hold them and touch them and taste the honey right out of the hive, so it was, it was really fun. Um, and starting in June, we started donating our extra excess vegetables to Phil Abundance, which is a, a food sharing group here in Philadelphia. Um, and we've been donating every Saturday. And um, to date, we've uh, donated an estimated value of about $1,500 of um, produce to families in Philadelphia. So that is um, an update on the garden. Thank and you for that report. If people, and if people were interested for the next year, how yeah. would they um, I'm find not, out? I'm not sure yet. We're still wrapping up this year's garden, and we have some clean updates in the fall, and it'll be, I guess, assessing who stays and, and who moves in and who moves out. Um, last late winter, early spring, there was a day at the library where anyone who's interested came, and we signed up and heard more information and committed to this. So. I imagine we may do something similar, but I, I can sort of remain this little liaison and, and post more information in here as I know what's going to happen for next year. Anything else on that? Well, I want to move to uh, to start to close down on this meeting so we can vacate the room. But we do have public participation. Um, I don't know if he intends to speak, but we do have Mr. Richard Blasetti who is a Radnor Republican committee person. And, uh, Thank you, sir. No, I, I am the new committee man in Radnor, and, uh, and I, was, I was curious to see what the board, to, to see a board meeting. And, uh, and I'm happy to be here, and I, I thank everybody for, uh, for your service. Could you please come up to the podium? Yeah. Our viewing audience can't hear or see you from where you're. Standing. Good afternoon. I'm I'm Rich Blasetti. I'm a new committee man in Radnor. I live in the six two over by Sugartown Road on Valley Forge Road. And I just became curious about politics in the township and uh I wanted to uh, hear your board and um I'm happy to be here and I thank you all for your service. Uh, to the to the township. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't see any other members of the public, so uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Anybody it. not in favor of that? <laughs> All right. Thank you.